changing We're flying high Creating a complaint-free world No more, no more Complaining people, their lives are changing We're flying high Creating a complaint-free world No more, no more and today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about what to do when things go wrong. And I mean when things go wrong. <laughs> now, if you are not familiar with these daily messages that I do, they're inspired by my own real life, often by my own real life, sometimes by things you all have asked or said to me. But in most cases, it's about stuff that's gone on in my own, my own life that's a challenge and that I've had to, to work through. So let me share something that happened yesterday and what happened. And I, I realized a process for getting through it. And I thought, wow, this is something I'll, I'll share with others. So here's what happened. We got this amazing uh, review testimonial from for one of my speeches. Now, I get those honestly frequently. I, every time I go, I ask somebody to shoot something on the video. And they everyone does. And they're usually just... All over the top. If you ever want to go see, you're welcome to go look at my website, willbowen.com. I'm feeling like the music's a little loud here. There we go. All right. So anyway, we had this amazing testimonial we wanted to email out to about 20,000 people, leads, people who have expressed an interest in me. Yeah, about 20,000 people. But we wanted to stagger it. We also wanted to make sure that we had other things in place, things called retargeting ads. If you go around the internet, you let's say you Google uh, new tennis shoes, and then all of a sudden you start seeing Nike shoe ads and stuff like that. Those are retargeting ads. So we wanted to have those ready, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We worked on all of it. And every time we thought we were there, we pushed it back a week because we were running into just, we wanted to get it all right. The way I was explaining it to the team was we want to make sure we're putting water into a bowl, not into a sieve. And we had lots of little holes in our sieve. So we worked on all of those. And then came the day yesterday when we were going to send out the first batch of emails, 5,000 emails to these people to let them know some of the things that they had expressed an interest in. So it was to go out at 930 yesterday morning, and I'm sitting there after the jump start at past 930, and I get a text from our director of training telling me that our website is down. I mean, down. Now, the whole purpose of the email that we're sending out to 5,000 people is to get them to go to my website. Go look at me speaking. Go look at the reviews of me speaking. Go check out my website. Our website was down. And on top of that, my daughter, who is also our web designer, and I think does an amazing job and is very creative and very talented. Um, of course, every dad would say that. <laughs> She's moving into a new home yesterday and today. So she had told me for weeks she was taking a few days off to move, et cetera, et cetera. And on that morning, 19 minutes after this email went out, to 5,000 people, I found out that our website was down. Ouch. Now, the first thing I did was my voice never got louder than this. And I can tell you I was not alone. And the person that was with me will tell you that I just got calm, not angry, calm, not steaming, calm, just all right. So I stopped eating my breakfast and I reached over and I grabbed my laptop and I checked and made sure she was right. And then I picked up the phone and I kept my voice even calmer when I call my daughter, because I've noticed that with my daughter, as well as myself and everyone else, whatever energy you bring to a problem, that's the energy that's going to get responded to the problem. And so I didn't call her freaked out. I didn't call her complaining, anything like that. I called and asked if it was the same on her end and what she thought it might be. Just that calm. Didn't even address the emails going up. Did not even talk about the 5,000 emails that had already gone out now 30 minutes previously. 
And she confirmed that, yeah, it was out. The website was down. The funny, and I do think this is actually funny thing, is that there is a program that our website uses. It's one of many little add-ons to make sure we have programs that speed the site up. We have programs to make sure people aren't putting spam on it. We have all these programs. And this program was supposed to protect our website. <laughs> And when I moved my address for the on file to pay for this little program, which is like a few bucks a year, was different. I hadn't updated it. So this little program that was supposed to protect my website <laughs> shut my website down. Now, in the past, I would have lost my mind over something like that. And I mean a decade or so ago, before I really got into the whole com not complaining thing. And just realize, you know, you've just got to accept it the way it is. And even in that moment, I thought that was kind of funny. So, my daughter dove in and worked on it for about 90 minutes. And then she got back and she said, okay, I was able to update everything and I was able to relaunch the website. Everything is good. So in the interim, in that 90 minutes, what did I do? Well, let me tell you what I used to would have done. I would have complained to everybody who could hear me. Now, this would have before I got into the complaint free movement, but I would have complained to everybody. And I would have told them how I was victimized and how unjust this was. And, you know, it was funny. For about a minute and a half, I felt myself starting to have a bit of a pity party. And here was the first thing that I did. I argued with myself. Instead of getting upset, I decided to feel it. Now, when something goes wrong, and I say feel it. So imagine you've dropped a, a wine glass. I did that about two months ago, right? Onto a tile floor, which means it explodes for about 20 feet and sending shrapnel everywhere. I actually had a, a piece of it got in my foot. <laughs> it just bounced. So when something like that happens, there is a feeling. The challenge is that the feeling that we have after the feeling we tend to attach thoughts, and those thoughts came from our childhood, typically. Critical thoughts, way to go, stupid. Oh, man, of course. Of course. It's one of the ways to know if you're complaining, depending on how you use that. If something goes well, it's of course. If something's going wrong, it's of course. And either way, it's neutral. So just feel what it is to feel it. When this happened, I realized that what I felt was frustrated. I felt frustrated because we had worked so hard on this. And I really felt frustrated because I felt like we should have known, we should have seen, something should have happened. And, and in that moment, I realized and this is important. When something goes wrong, your ego wants to jump in because your ego is there to try and keep you safe, try and fix things. And what it does is it looks for somebody to blame. So yeah, in my mind, I started wanting to blame me. I started wanting to blame my daughter. I started to want to blame our web consultant, Anuj. I started wanting to blame, blame, blame. And I went, whoa, 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 wrong, wrong. And then I started remembering what I said just a few days ago, and that is the best way to get over something is to give thanks for it. So I, inside I went, thank you. Thank you. It wasn't easy to say. I was gritting my teeth, but I said, thank you. So the feeling is normal. You want to have the feeling, but what you tell yourself after that is critical. If you begin to attack yourself, which it's amazing how many people do that. Way to go, stupid. Of course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're done because you have just punished and sent out the room, the one person you need to fix it. So I felt it. And then I asked myself, what can I do to fix it? I called my daughter again and I said, is there anything I can do to help with the website? She said, no. And I noticed again, my energy was like this. Guess what her energy was? Just like this. She said, no, dad, I'm working on it right now. I figured out the issue. I should have it back up soon. I'll let you know when it's done. I said, great. I got off the phone and then I realized I've got two assistants 
who were always putting people into speaking campaigns for speaking. And I needed to let them know, don't do that because the website is down. The speaking campaign send people to the website. So what I did was I reached out and contacted the people. I did what I could. When something goes wrong, sure, feel it. Don't blame yourself, no matter what it is, because you then need to do the best you can to try and fix it. In my case, there was a lot I could do, but instead of picking up the phone or in getting into a pity party the way I used to would have done, I contacted the other assistants and then I just forgot it. I just forgot it. I just let it go. I said, this is not the first bomb we've had. And I began to out loud tell my stories of mistakes that I had made in the past and also mistakes some of the great mentors of mine have made. I remember one time, Benji, uh, Brendan Burchard, rather, um, Brendan Burchard's a huge inspirational speaker and does seminars, and I've read his books, and I've been to his seminars, and he does seminars on how to do seminars. And one time he was in the middle of doing a seminar and he had overcommitted and he was supposed to be doing a virtual internet thing for the Oprah Winfrey network. And he had forgotten and he remembered it and sort of got off stage, went and started recording pieces of it and uploading it and trying to stay because he got 30 minutes and he should have recorded like hours worth of stuff. And he tried to record, upload, record, upload, record, upload, record, upload. And finally the internet crashed. Ah, what did he do? He just told everybody the truth. Did his life end? No. Did his career end? No. It actually gave him an amazing story. So once you've felt it and done what you can to fix it, forget it. That's absolutely the best and only thing you can do. And then move on. I had a buddy who used to always say FIDO. You know what FIDO stands for? Forget it. Drive on. Just forget it. Drive on. One of my favorite scenes in my favorite book, Lonesome Dove, is after uh, one of the boys dies and uh, Augustus McRae says, dust to dust. And he got on his horse and he rode on. Nothing else you can do. Listen, I want to say hello one more time. Uh, Willow says, I went for a walk. I had a day like that too. What you resist persists, said Willow. I get it. Yes. Daniel says, good morning. Hey, Jerome, good to see you. And Joan Malmuth, writer, says, good morning from D.C. Glad to hear you are here with us from D.C. And thank you all for being with us every single day. We, of course, have our complaint-free meditation program. It's only $25 a month. We hope that you will check it out and become a member. We meditate after the jumpstart every single day. Listen, whatever goes wrong today or whatever goes right today, feel it, fix it, and then forget it. That's the best you can do, and it's all you can do. Enjoy today. Bye-bye. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing.